Welcome to my name is Kate and this is my channel Chapter Kate. Today I'm going to be doing my mental illness or mental health books wrap up for 2018. In August of 2018 I started the Green Ribbon Book Club. It is a booktube and book twitter based book club where we read books that have mental illness representation. I'm going to try to go through these in the order in which I read them but I'm not entirely sure what that was so some of this might not be in the exact order. The first book is A Tragic... Hello darkness my old friend. Oh, that's upside down. The first tra I've come to talk with you again. The first tragic. The first book is a tragic kind of wonderful. This book is by Eric Lindstrom and it is starring a main character, starring. And the main character has bipolar disorder and she kind of goes through struggling with that, struggling with med changes, struggling with um discovering who she is as a person. And it's a really great book and it's the first book I ever read that had mental illness representation done well where it wasn't like romanticizing it or using it as like a plot device. It was really nice to read that and to see myself kind of represented in this book. I have a full review of this book so I'm not going to go really far into it but I will link that review or put it in the cards wherever those go. Another cool thing is Eric Lindstrom is extremely responsive on book Twitter if you ever want to talk to him or tell him how awesome he is for writing this awesome book. Another awesome thing I want to mention about this book is that at the beginning of each chapter she sort of has how she checks in to her personal like mood tracker um, and she uses different animals to represent different parts of her so like hamster is like her energy level um, hummingbird is sort of her thinking or um, something like that um, hammerhead is like her physical body um, and then Hannigan-animal is her, her last name is Hannigan, so if she puts that as up or down it kind of talks about her mood, but it kind of explains how that works. But at the beginning of each chapter it does give you kind of an idea of where she is mentally. But I think it's really well written and I think it does help to sort of support use of medications. A lot of um, mental illness um, representation in books kind of bad talks medications and that is super unhelpful for people in the mental health profession who are trying to get patients to take their medications. And it's extremely unhelpful for people that have mental illness that have a difficult time taking medications. So I thought that it was nicely done in here. It also captured the genetic aspect of bipolar disorder and how it can impact different people in different ways. Next was Paperweight, and this was by Meg Haston. Um, this was the first book that the Green Ribbon Book Club read, so I got to do a live show. It was really awesome. And this book is about a girl who is struggling with bulimia, and it kind of goes through her sort of process of um, dealing with suicidal thoughts, dealing with her eating disorder, dealing with going into a long-term sort of treatment facility. And it's done really beautifully, but I will say some of the descriptions of her are, I feel, somewhat harmful to stigmas that exist around eating disorders, but I will definitely let you sort of discover that on your own. Um, and I will definitely put a card to the live show that we did, the live discussion that we did on this book. But overall, I do think it was well done. Halfway through, I was ready to give it up, and then as the book went on and things changed a little bit, I kind of felt like I um, understood more about this book. So that was nice. Next we have Marbles, Mania, Depression, Michelangelo, and Me, a graphic memoir by Ellen Forney. This book I thought was so cool because it is technically it's a nonfiction, but it's also a graphic sort of novel. Um, and it's done really well. It's all in black and white. Um, it's about her experience with bipolar disorder as well. She kind of goes through her process of learning that she has it, trying different um, areas of treatment, going through sort of rejecting medication, then accepting medication, making it a huge part of her identity, things like that. Um, and I love that the art sort of follows wherever her mental state is. If she's more depressed, the art is more dark and sort of um, simplistic. And if she's manic, it's all over the place. Um, it's done really well and I really enjoyed this. Then we have The Yellow Wallpaper. This is like a like 30 page book. It's probably less than 30 pages. Um, and I'm going to put a picture on here because I totally didn't lose it. It's somewhere. I don't know where it is. I threw it in some video and I don't I don't know where, I don't know where it I don't know where it went. But this is a classic story and it's kind of a gothic style book. Um it's a little bit confusing. It's it's kind of hard cuz you don't really get closure and you don't really get um an understanding of what happened. It definitely has a those gothic elements in there that add to some of the mystery and intrigue. I will say this is not a great representation of mental illness in general, but it does show a little bit of the treatment of mental illness, or at least women that have mental illness um, back in the day, how they were treated by um, the men in their lives, how they were treated by society. They're kind of just locked up in a house or in an asylum. Um, but I did, will say it was an interesting read and it was kind of haunting. And I, I would, I would recommend it if you enjoy sort of that gothic style literature, if you enjoy, um, horror, if you enjoy, um, 
sort of suspenseful reads, I think you would enjoy it. Or even just reads that are confusing and befuddling and yeah, try it out. The next book that we read with the Green Ribbon Book Club was Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia. This is starring a girl named Eliza who has a very extremely popular, successful web series, webcomic, webcomic. And she is living with really extreme anxiety. Why are there always planes around here? And so she's kind of dealing with learning how to cope with her anxiety, learning how to balance her secret webcomic famous creator life with being in high school, which is a terrible combination. She also meets an amazing guy at school. But it's a really great depiction of, of not only anxiety, but online life, online community, online sort of culture and how we've grown to having more like online friendships. Um, and I really related to that aspect of things because I've been a member of so many online communities um, since high school, you know, just various ones. And so it was nice to see that depicted in a book. Then we have Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. This was the book for our October, I think, which was also the month that we had the Gribathon during Mental Illness Awareness Week. This book follows Aza, who has obsessive compulsive disorder, um, and it deals a lot with her spiraling thoughts. One thing I really like about this book is not only is it an own voices book, because John Green has um, obsessive compulsive disorder, but it does a really good job of showing the obsession part of OCD and not just the compulsion part of OCD. So a lot of people, when they hear OCD and they see it portrayed in media, it's cleaning, excessive hand washing doing something a bunch of times in a row. Um, but this really gets into her mindset when she's doing things. And I thought that was really cool. One thing I didn't like so much about this is that it's presented sort of as a mystery. Like she's trying to do this detective work and figure out this um, sort of case that's happening, finding this fugitive guy. But it doesn't really, it kind of, it's not only a subplot, but it's like a super sub sub subplot. Like it's barely even mentioned kind of throughout the story. I feel like it could have gotten more attention and that would have been nice. Otherwise, um, it's John Green. This is the only book I've ever read by John Green. I can't say I'm a huge fan of his writing. Um, I feel like a lot of lines are like things you would hear in like movie trailers. It's like a really... Oh, this is a super deep line. And then it just, I don't know. I just could, I couldn't get into it as much as I wanted to, but I did. I mean, it was a nice book. The next book I also read during the Gribathon, and that was Wild Awake by Hilary T. Smith. This book follows somebody. Kiri? Kiri? This book follows a girl named Kiri who is in a band. She's the lead singer and she plays keyboard. She also plays classical piano. Kiri has bipolar disorder, but it's not really blatantly said. Her friend's mother is a social worker who suggests that Kiri may be going through sort of a manic episode um, because she's kind of doing a lot of impulsive things, impulsive buying. Um, she's really creative. She's staying up for several nights in a row, just practicing and playing. Um, and I, I really related to this book because I did that a lot in college. I would stay up late writing or um, composing music or doing artwork or um, trying to like do different things, you know, creatively or to do with my schoolwork. And so I definitely related to that. Um, and she's also dealing with her sister who had passed away years before named Suki and kind of discovering more about her death that she didn't know previously. I will say in this book there's a lot of negative talk towards medication um, because it, there's not really any resolution in this book to the end, I don't think. Um, it doesn't really feel like she gets treatment for what she's going through. Um, it sort of feels like it just kind of fades to black. It doesn't really, nothing really happens that's clear at the end, I don't think. But I will say I kind of got excited because they did mention music therapy in here and that was kind of cool, but uh, it wasn't like mentioned very well, I guess. I don't know. But it was a good book overall and it was really nice to see more bipolar representation. And then we have our November read, which was The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. Okay, so the issue with this book is that I started reading it and then I just could not finish it. I had such a reading slump between like October through the end of December and I even had like a live show planned with Min Kobayashi and Wolfie and I just I could not I could not finish this book 
So I'm going to eventually revisit this book and hopefully we'll make up that live show at some point. But at the moment I'm just having a really hard time getting through it. Um, but I am hoping to finish this at some point. And that is all the books with mental illness representation that I read in the year of 2018. That's the weirdest thing to say. And those are all the books that I read in 2018 with mental illness representation. Now for 2019 I did put out a couple of polls on our Green Ribbon Book Club Twitter. I asked if you wanted to do monthly or bi-monthly reads. Um, bi-monthly seemed to kind of win but not by a ton so I'm thinking about throwing a couple of bi-monthly reads in throughout the year. Um, I'm also planning on incorporating occasionally a couple of non-fiction books in there. I'm not going to make it anything super thick or super dense but I am planning on putting a couple of those in there throughout the year. I'm hoping to continue with live shows every time we have a book read and I'm also hoping to start announcing our book for the month during my videos on here just in case somebody wants to read with our book club that does not have a Twitter or does not participate on Twitter. I will say that if you really want to be informed about the book club that Twitter is the best place for that information because that's where most of it gets posted. And now it's time for a booktuber spotlight. And today's booktuber spotlight is going to go to Wolfie from Silly Little Ravenclaw. Wolfie is an amazing booktuber who has recently, for Vlogmas, done videos about their dissociative identity disorder. I think that they have been extremely creative with the way that they've done videos. They've done Alters Pick My TBR and um, Alters Kind of Choose Their Favorite Books. And they've talked about different aspects of dissociative identity disorder, which I think is extremely brave because I feel like dissociative identity disorder or DID is one of those mental illnesses that has um, a larger stigma than others. And I, I appreciate that they have such bravery to talk about that. But that is all for this video. If you have any books that you've read this year with mental illness representation or that you've read in the past that you think that we should read in the Green Ribbon Book Club, I would love if you would leave that below. And of course I would like you to like the video if you liked the video. If you didn't like the video you could still give it a thumbs up or not. It's up to you. Whatever. But that's all. If you would like more of this junk subscribe below. Bye! Tripping over shadows and I'm drowning in the night I feel the soldiers coming, I'm done pulling up a fight I feel my eyelids closing under